Log piles have been a popular wildlife garden feature for a while now, but there are a few guidelines to follow to make sure you get the most out of them. These habitats can provide a home for both flora, such as mosses, lichens, and a variety of fungi, and fauna. In the UK, nearly 2,000 types of invertebrate require deadwood as part of their life cycle, and if placed near a pond, a log pile can provide a hibernation site for frogs and toads. When it comes to sourcing your wood, the main thing is to not take it from a woodland or other natural environment. That is where it is supposed to be. You should get your logs and branches from any trees that are felled in yours or a neighbour's garden. You should avoid locating the wood pile in a very sunny spot as this will result in the wood drying out and supporting significantly less life. However, it should also not be in too dense shade as this will lower the temperature and it will be too cold to attract most insects. Ideally, you want a location that provides dappled sun and shade. This will provide a nice mixture of warmth and humidity. There are two basic approaches to log piles, horizontal and vertical. Horizontal piles are perfectly effective, just ensure that the lowest level of wood is buried a few centimetres in the soil. Vertical piles are best though, as they provide the most possibilities for microclimates. They are especially recommended if you are in an area that supports stag beetles. This will be the home counties, East Suffolk and the New Forest. The variety provides the best results, so you should create your pile from different species and sizes of log and branch. The bigger the log, the more value it will provide, as it takes longer to complete the decomposing process, and thus supports more life. Branches, four inches in diameter and more, are best, but, as you can see, sometimes beggars can't be choosers. Also, wood from hardwood trees, such as ash, beech and oak, is better than softwood, but all types provide value. Whatever you use, keep the bark on it. The logs need to be buried 18 to 20 inches below the surface, and arranged so that those in the middle stick up highest and those at the edges the lowest. Again, we are aiming to provide a variety of microclimates, so avoid them all sticking up at the same height. Once all the logs and branches are in place, fill in the rest of the hole with the soil you just dug out, making sure to push it into any gaps. You can finish it off by giving it a water to kickstart the rotting process below ground. Then, if it looks dry at any point after that, give it some more water. And hey presto, one, very modest, vertical log pile. But remember that even a single log, either buried vertically or laying on its side, can add to the biodiversity effort and value of your wildlife garden or even balcony. At the moment, this one has no shade, but I will plant a shrub nearby to give it some. I could plant a climber, such as ivy, to grow over it, and this will help retain moisture but if it grows too thickly, it may make it too cold for the insects we are hoping to attract. Other alternatives, even simpler than log piles, are to leave any tree stumps you have in the garden to naturally decompose, or to simply lay a broad section of log on the soil surface. This will provide a stable environment beneath and a hibernating place for amphibians. Now it's your turn. Goodbye.